I decided to make a new speed handle and ended up using the wrong tool, which means I ruined the first speed handle. So I did some organization. Welcome to a new episode. Hi, my name is John. I decided to make a new version of the speed vise because I had some issues with the old one. And in the process, I ended up using a larger tool for one of the ops than I expected to because I forgot which tool was in a specific slot. So that led me to do some organization of my tools so I have a better chance of remembering which is in which slot of the tool changer. As you'll recall, this is the handle I made last time with the 3D printed black part here. And let me show you the problem with the handle. This is the handle I made last time and as you can see it's really way too loose so I decided to make a new handle. I posted a link to my video on Facebook and not long after another user Jason Howerton posted this which got me really inspired. I liked the clean lines of this a lot better so I headed over to the computer and created my own version. And you can see it's pretty close to the one that Jason had. Uh, it's narrower because the hex on mine is smaller. It's less than half of an inch. Then I have the lightning holes here, which are not really required. The other change that I made, which is a fairly important one, is that these right now are 1 16th inch holes instead of 1 8th inch holes. Making them smaller meant that this flat area is larger, so there's more metal to grab onto the hex. Partway through making the part, I had a problem. And as you can see, it opened up the first hex hole a lot more than I expected it to. And you can tell that from the sound as well. Now, the problem you just saw there is a result of having the wrong tool. I chose tool 3, which I thought was a 3 16th inch end mill, but that wasn't correct. It was actually a quarter inch end mill. And my 3 16th inch end mill was in a different slot. So. One of the things I realized is that I was having problems keeping all my tools organized. And so I came up with an idea. Let me show you the idea. So I got uh, some magnetic tape. It's basically uh, a roll of magnet that has uh, tape on one side. And then I printed out labels that I put onto each of these and then I just cut it around. So this way I can tell exactly what I have in the machine. And I had this one here. I think, yeah, I had this one here. I thought it was in three, slot three, but it was actually in slot 12. So now I have my slots labeled so I know exactly what is in each of these. And that means that when I come to the machine, I can look to see what I had in there last. It also means that when I load a tool into here, I want to make sure that I update this chart. Now, one of the other things that I discovered is really nice about this is that if I want to manually clean up one of the edges, I can look here and say, okay, Here's my 3 inch alu power, uh, which is a great uh, one for cleaning up the edge. So I can manually select this and then manually just clean up the edge. And I'm really happy with this. I've, I've got some other ones I'm going to try. Uh, this is instead of the tape, I have some that are holders you can put on here and you slip a piece of paper in. Uh, I'm going to try that and give you an update next time. You'll see that here it starts out fairly quick and then slows down and that's because I set the rapids to 5% which is something that I like to do on a first job to make sure I don't crash. This time I also switch to thick material. I'm using 3 quarters of an inch thick material to make a half inch thick wrench and I did this for two reasons. One is because I ran out of the half inch thick material but the other thing which is the really nice part is I don't have to use a fixture like I did last time. I can mill it from one side, flip it over, hold it in the vise regularly, and then mill it from the other side. I left 20 thousandths to remove from the top so that I'd mill both the top and the bottom sides, giving a uniform look to both sides. It's a delight to watch the 1 16th inch drill just go through the material like it's butter. And it's also amazing to see just how fast this machine is. The roughing operation left some cusps here. So when I finish it with the 3 16th inch end mill, you can see it mostly gets rid of the cusps, but not completely. So then I have another pass 
that uses a one eighth inch end mill and that completely gets rid of the cusps. But you can see that it's because it's using rust machine, it's just machining a few small areas. And I didn't set it up correctly, so it's retracting and then going back down for each of those sections. The handle got stuck and I had to wiggle on that a little bit. Then I needed to remember which way I had it in so that I could flip it left to right. And that way the new coordinate system would be the back right instead of the back left. Milling the back side produced some really large and very satisfying chips. It's certainly moving the material quite quickly. Oh, that's beautiful. That turned out, uh, that turned out perfect. So now I just need to uh, tap this hole and put the handle in and it'll be ready to go. And uh, yeah, that feels so much better than uh, the one that I had before. Since the last time I got a, a new spiral flute chap, so this should pull the, the chips out and also it, I shouldn't have to back out. So I'm going to give that a try and see how it works. So let me find my aluminum tap. Uh, look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, this, this handle is interesting because it has, so it has a hex on the end here, uh, which means you, you kind of screw it into the handle. So I'm going to get the correct hex wrench for that. So it's a three millimeter metric. I'm not sure why it's a three millimeter metric. Anyway, so what that means is I can start screwing it in this way. You got it started. And then I can put the wrench through the back and just screw it in. And as you can see, it's working its way in. Give it a good tug. And there we have it. So now let me try it again on the mill and see how it is. Okay, let's try it now. Got this handle on here. Ooh, that is so nice. Because, you know, the handle rotates freely. Ah, I love that. And then when I get to the end, I can just go like this, give it a good tug, and off it comes. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I realize it's a little bit of a repeat because I made the handle again. But at the same time, there are some things I learned and I came up with this system, which I'm pretty happy with. Also, I really like the new handle. Uh, it uh, feels a lot better. Please subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, and comment below. All of those things help the search algorithms so that my videos are more likely to show up. So, see you next time.